Hello everyone, this is GM Josh Friedel, and today I'm going to be lecturing on the technique of Zugzwang. So I'm sure most of you uh, are familiar with the concept, but uh, for those of you who are not, it's basically you for, basically it's a position in which uh, any move basically worsens your position. But unfortunately, because of the rules of chess, you can't say pass, so you basically have to move. Um, now, a lot of you know it in very basic endings, like, for example, king and pawn. Basic king and pawn endings, you use it all the time. It's often the difference between, you know, a, uh, a draw and a loss. Um, sometimes, some even a win and a loss. Uh, simply because, you know, one side has to move. Um, and if the other side were to move, the result would be different. Um, so, but some end games, uh, the concept is used in a slightly more sophisticated way, in that, Sure, I mean, without the Zugzwang, it might even still be winning for you. But, because of Zugzwang, it makes it just impossible to hold some positions. Uh, so, here's an example. This is from uh, the World Open, which took place recently in Philadelphia. Um, I had a pretty bad tournament, but uh, this particular game I played was actually rather nice. So, I was black here, and a uh, talented junior, uh, I think he actually recently won the uh, Pan Am for under-14, Alec Getz was white, so... Uh, Anyway, I had, you know, a pretty successful opening, um, played some good moves, uh, and eventually I got to this position where I'm up in exchange for a pawn, but it's pretty clear that the exchange is a lot better here. Uh, my rook's quite powerful, it's 9 and a 5 out of play. However, it's never easy to win such things. Uh, right now, the main problem is that my rook can't penetrate his position. Um, so, uh, I want to be able to fix that. Now, first of all, I want to keep his knight on a5 out of play. So, I start with the move c5. So, for example, if I play king f7, he plays b4 now, and his knight will come into c5. It'll be a little annoying. Again, I, I think it's still a win, but I wanted to make sure his knight stayed out. So, he played b4, and now I played c4. So, the drawback to this is that it's now a little bit more locked, so my rook might have a harder time getting in. The upside, of course, is that now he's playing without the knight on a5. And I felt that that was more uh, significant. So he plays now a nice side maneuver, which is knight b1. So his idea is to put the knight on c3 and basically say, you can't can't touch me. I'm you know just going to sit here. Your rook can't get in. Um, so he also has the idea with the knight on c3, by the way, of playing b a4 and trying to attack b5. So I'm going to need my rook and e5 to be secure. So what move uh, might I play? And again, if you at any point want to solve a position, just pause your video, and uh, then you don't have to hear me give away what I played. So in this position, I played g5. So the idea is that basically I secure my rook and e5, and, and this makes it uh, much harder for him to attack b5. So he plays knight c3. I bring my king in. Remember, in end games, activating your king is one of the first things you do almost always. So king f7. We hope you enjoyed this video demo from chess.com. Subscribe today to finish this video and get unlimited access to our full video library. Your membership also includes access to Chess Mentor, the most advanced interactive training tool available anywhere. You'll also get full access to the Opening Explorer, Tactics Trainer, and much, much more. So sign up today and get serious about improving your game.